In this video, guys, let's talk about a scientific approach to trading. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so scientific approach to trading. So we know that trading is a real mixture of art and science. If you take too much of a scientific approach, I feel like that's a dead end. It can get you so far, but there's a certain human element that needs to be imparted onto your system and your strategy that helps you decipher some of the market moves and helps you play that game of chess. And you know, I, I'm always of the argument of if you went pure scientific, then the market could be solved because there's so much engineering power out there, there's so many bright and bright minds, computing power, capital, that if it could be solved, it would be solved. So we have to have a little bit of a blend. However, saying that, go to the other end and you're completely intuition-based or completely emotion-based, you're again, you're not gonna have any structure and stuff. So there's parts of trading that I think we should have a very scientific approach to. And so let's just go over some of the things that I think are probably significant for approaching trading from that perspective. The first thing is hypothesis. So as, 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 as you come up with a trade idea, in terms of trade idea and potentially with your system and strategy and your approach, you come up with a hypothesis and that's, okay, I think the market is heading higher or I think we're in a mean reversion environment or I think the market's gonna push the lows and then bounce off the lows. Um, that's probably not hypothesis in the strict term of a, a scientific uh, terminology, but that's what we're doing. We kind of have an idea and then we're saying, how do we express that? So what do we need to see to confirm that or deny that? And then we're placing a trade afterwards. So we're saying, okay, I think this market is gonna continue trending higher. That's the hypothesis. What do I need to see evidence to suggest that's gonna happen? X, Y, Z, little pullback that holds, holding above a high, blah, 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 all these type of operational things. Okay, I'm gonna take the trade to express that and we'll see if that's true. Because of course, with science, we you'd look at something, do the experiment, get the result, and then you'd analyze it with trading. There's no point doing after the fact. We're trying to judge it and be right for that outcome. We're kind of betting on that hypothesis being correct. Same also with you know, your hypothesis with your system. I think that you know, my stop loss is too tight. Okay, let me go back and analyze it, which brings me to how to review the data. So if you take a scientific approach to your prior trading, your journaling, et cetera, and you go, hey, look, I'm gonna hypothesize that my stop's been too tight, keep getting pinged down, death by a thousand cut syndrome. Okay, let me review the data in a scientific manner. So you are downloading all your trades, you're putting them into a spreadsheet potentially, and you're saying, hey, look, now look what happened after five minutes, 15 minutes, one day after I got stopped out, how many times would the market have gone in my favor? Or what was my maximum adverse excursion if I'd have held that up to my targets? So you can kind of run this data and you can objectively look and say, hey, I've, my hypothesis one being stopped out too much, or I've read the data and it's a binary outcome. Yes, that's true. And so then you come up with a fix and say, hey, do I need to widen the stop? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? Uh, or you go, no, I'm not being stopped out. I'm actually being stopped out fairly. I'm just bad at actually picking the direction of trade. Those stops are saving me. It feels like I'm being stopped out a lot, but in actual fact, I'm just bad at picking direction. So then you go down another route and you say, hey, I'm bad at bad at picking direction, how can I improve that? So again, it's a very scientific, logical approach going down this flow chart of if, then, if, then, if, then. Okay, make changes to one variable. So if you run this science experiment, most of the time, if you're going to change something, you adjust one variable, right? If you are, I'm trying to think of some, some scientific thing. Okay, let's say you're tuning an engine. Right? It's not scientific, it's more engineering, I guess. But if you're tuning an engine, um, people might say, okay, I want to improve the power output of this engine. Uh, let me try to increase the boost on the turbo, for example, and see what improvement that has. And so there'd be one variable they would adjust, and they go, right, I know, I know you've got to add more fuel flow into that. It's going to technicalities. But then let's look at something else like the cam timing. Let's look at something else like this and that. And so when you're taking a scientific approach to something, often you're adjusting one variable and seeing how that has uh, how that impacts the result, right? So maybe someone's adding a little bit more of a certain chemical into the mix and seeing if that changes things, it changes the, changing the recipe. So making changes to one variable is very, very important in trading as well, because just like example, you're getting stopped too much potentially, you know, you don't want to be changing how you get into the trade, your position size, how long you hold the trade, when you trade, blah, 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 all these type of variables. You want to say, okay, this is not effective. I'm going to just adjust the stop size and then run with it for a bit. And then I'm going to say, right, let's, let's improve things. Right, I'm just going to adjust um, 
how much sides I take on this trade. Ding, I'm just gonna adjust whether I take this trade or not. Ding, and so you start making these adjustments to one variable at a time rather than loads of variables at once because you don't know what's moved the needle. If you're constantly changing all these things, you go, well, it's okay, but which one worked? I don't know, you know, so, how do, I, how do I move forward from that? So scientific approach is adjusting and changing one variable in your trading at a time. And then diagnose logically. So this is a case of, okay, what's not working and not just blanketly going, I'm not profitable or it's not working for me. It's like, what exactly is it? Am I too soon on the trades? Am I trading the one wrong instrument? And it's being you know, very objective and, and logical with your assessment and going through all the things it could be and saying, could be my stop, could be my entry, could be my direction, could be this, could be that, could be that. Let me start with that, is it? Look at the trades. No, it's not. Is it this? It could be, right, put it to one side. And so it's that logical process of going through, trying to find fixes for each individual section of your trading. And the final thing, run time test to completion. If you are running an experiment as a scientist, engineer, whatever it may be, you are going to say, hey, this takes X amount of time to complete. We're going to run this for X amount of time and we're going to see the results. In trading, it should be no different. We should run an experiment and say, hey, I'm going to trade this with a stop that's twice as wide or a two times ATR target on my trades or only taking trades that have a bullish engulfing after my trigger round, whatever the case may be, and I'm going to run with it and I'm going to see the results. Now, of course, this is where we blur a little bit because the dynamics are different, the conditions are different, no two market conditions are the same, so you don't get identical results, but you start to see and you go, okay, there was pretty similar conditions, things were pretty similar, and I've got an improvement with that, so I'm gonna hypothesize that that's helping me. And so I've done that for 10 days, I've done that for 15 days, whatever it may be, I complete the experiment, I review the data that appears to have been quite effective, next. Look at the next variable, review the data, hypothesize on what to improve, make the changes to one variable, then run with it for a specific period of time and diagnose logically. So scientific approach to trading, guys, can't go too sciencey. Sciencey, is that word? Probably not. <laughs> you can't go too focused on this. You have to have some art and some intuition and some of that's developed human trader element. But at the same time, I think at some point you have to go, right, this is a binary output. I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna get the results. I'm gonna do this logically, flowchart type pattern of improvement, and then I'm gonna see where I am. And then maybe you work on some hunches. Maybe then you do some intuition-based stuff. Anyway guys, take care, keep the risk managed. See you next one, bye-bye.